Bye, Shalawam, Yasharela, and everyone else out there. My name is Ara Raka, and here with me, as usual, is Maka'ala Ana, the meek one. The name of today's lesson is Destined for Greatness, Yet Subject to Sin. Uh, before we get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Ahaya, Ashur Ahaya, Bahashim Yishaya, Wawawa Kadash. In correlation with 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 4 through 6, we ask that all women have their heads covered during the lesson and all men have their heads uncovered. Uh, no. Got a lot of things going on in the earth today. Maybe we can skim over a couple current events or save them till the end and get right into the lesson. Because it's kind of late. Mm -hmm. Today, it is the f fourth Sabbath of the seventh month, the 28th day. On your Hebrew calendars. So, and what we'll do, if we got time, we can talk about some current events at the end of the lesson. Let's get right into it. Uh, We'll have Maka Allah lead us off in the Shammai. And we'll get started with the lesson. Shammai Yasharala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akhad. Shammai Yasharala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akhad. Shammai Yasharala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akhad. Shemai Yasharala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akhad. Shammai Yasharala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akhad. Shemai Yasharala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akab. Hero Israel, the Lord our power is one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, our power is one. So, uh, like I said earlier, the name of today's lesson is Destined for Greatness, Yet Subject to Sin. We're going to start off in the book of Genesis, the very first chapter. We're going to hit verses 27 and 28. We have commentary with this lesson. And we have some starting out. There was once a time where as a people, we taught the world through example what is meant to be righteous as a, night, as a nation. As in the beginning, sin entered in and ultimately we lost our way. Let us examine the scriptures to better understand the journey we must go through in order to become that perfect vessel that the Most High can use to one day direct the earth in righteousness again. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 27 through 28. We're going to give them some time today. I, I got a message that I we were going get too to, fast. Yeah, going a little too fast. They couldn't keep up getting to the scriptures. Genesis, your first book in the Bible. The very first chapter, 27th and 28th verses. And after that, we're going to 2nd Ezra. So get be prepared. We're going to 2nd Ezra after. Can you ask them to say con when they get there? Sure. Anybody who doesn't have their few phone mode, uh, muted, so I can. You want to say con when you get to the scriptures? That'll help us out. Con. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So Ahiah created man in his own image. 
in the image of Ahia created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. And the Most High Ahia blessed them, and Ahia said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay. So in the beginning, the Most High created man in his own image, the image and likeness of him. In the image of the Most High created he him. Male and female created he them. So uh, we're going to Second Edris, chapter 3. Second Edris. Chapter 3, we're starting at the 19th verse. Anybody who's uh, keeping track, 19 through 27. Second Ezra, chapter 3, verses 20, I mean, verses 19 through 27. Like Yeshia, our job was to represent the Most High in righteousness. We were given dominion over the whole earth in order to place it in balance under the laws of the Father. Before we could come of full age and understanding, we fell through temptation and sin by rebelling against the Father. We're in the book of Second Ezra, chapter 3, starting at the 19th verse. Give him a little bit of time. That's in your uh, Apocryphus, Second Ezra in your Apocrypha books. Or some of us have the, uh, what is that, the Researcher's Library of Ancient Texts, Volume 1. It's also in there. Is it in uh, the so book? Yeah. Nah. Okay. It's called Ezra. It's not in your Canical books. He gave Adam, man, dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Go ahead, Art. Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 19. And thy glory went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold, that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Thus infirmity was made permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away, and the evil abode still. Verse 23. So the times passed away, and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise thee up a servant called David. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. Whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein. Verse 25. When this was done many years, then they inhabited the city, forsook thee. Verse 26. And in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done, for they also had a wicked heart. And verse 27. And so thou gavest the city over into the hands of thine enemies. Okay, so we're going to the book of Jasher, chapter 3. Book of Jasher, chapter 3. 
We're going to start at the first verse, 1 through 4, then we're going to skip down to 17 and 20. The book of Jasher, chapter 3. That's in your researcher's library of ancient texts. Uh, also, the book of Jasher is a separate book as well. That's what makes noise. So he said, And thy glory went through, this is second Ezra repeating 3 and 19, went, went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of coal that thou mightest give the law un, up to the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. And yet thou not away, and yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. So we've been transgressing, transgressing since the first Adam was bearing a wicked heart and was overcome. And all that were born of him. So infirmity was made permanent. And the law also. In the heart of the people. With the malignity of the root. So that the good departed away. And the evil abode still. When the book of Jasher. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The fall of, this is a commentary. The fall of Adam brought forth sin within our bodies to the point it was like a law in itself. Even though Adam sinned, we have been even more rebellious than Adam ever was. There were many who arose to help our people like David, to come back to the ways of the Father, but eventually, much like today, we forsake his ways for sin. And it's tough out here these days. Hard out here for a Hebrew, especially over there in Babylon, where every foul spirit and hateful bird is there. Every foul spirit attacks Israel anyway mm -hmm. everyone not some of them not most of them every last one so we're in the book of Jasher and after Jasher we're going to first John go ahead up Book of Jasher, chapter 3, verse 1. <clears throat> and Enoch lived 65 years, and he begat Methuselah. Hold up, Methuselah. He was the oldest living and recorded, I think, out of anybody that's been recorded. He lived the longest. Mm -hmm. He almost lived over a day, like a day to the most high is a thousand. Mm -hmm. So he lived 900 and close to like about 40 years shy. Mm -hmm. I think Adam was 900. Mm -hmm. And he not walked with the Most High Ahiah after having begot Methuselah, and he served the Most High and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Most High, in knowledge and in understanding. And he wisely retired from the sons of men and secretly himself from them for many days. Or should I say, and secreted himself from them for many days. Okay. And that's a key verse. He wisely retired from the sons of men. He doesn't bother with hanging out with people. Right. Hang, you know, I got to go and uh, meet up with Joe and Mike and all them or whatever their names was back then. He was set apart. He set himself apart. He wisely kept himself away 
from the sons of men. And secreted himself from them for many days. Go ahead. Verse 3. And it was at the expiration of many years, while as he was serving the Most High and praying before him in his house, that an angel of the Most High called to him from heaven, and he said, Here am I. Yeah, because, um, you know what I mean? You out there in the streets, man, so-called, they say it today, or in the world, man, it's a lot, you know, a lot of temptations can befall you just from hanging with other people mm -hmm. and seeing what they doing and how they going through life can put a toll, you know, put a toll on you and uh, really uh, put a temptation in you to be like them or, wow, look what he's doing. Ain't nobody he getting away with it. I can do that too. Verse 4, And he said, Rise, go forth from thy house and from the place where thou doest hide thyself and appear to the sons of men in order that thou mayest teach them the way in which they should go and the work which they must which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of Ahia. Right. So while he's chilling at by himself in the crib, just studying the word and praising the Father and keeping to himself, the angel of the most high spoke to him. The Lord called him from heaven. So while the world was becoming worse to stay pure, Enoch spent his time separated from the worldly people. He was focused on understanding the ways of the Most High. Enoch is an example of what we really should begin to do in our own lives. Our interactions with the world should primarily be for the edification of the people and, of course, whatever we must do to sustain ourselves in righteousness. Like saying that you, only time you should really be out there in the world is to be giving the world some knowledge, like edifying the people or whatever you must do to sustain yourselves in righteousness. You know, you might go out and get some grub, whatever you got to do like that. But for the most part, he didn't mess with people like that. We're going to skip down to the 17th verse, 17 through 20. Verse 17. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the 243rd year of the reign of Enoch in that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men and to secrete himself as at first in order to serve the Most High. So, wow. So Enoch was 400, how old was he? He was 243 years old when Adam died. That's crazy. You mean Adam was around so long. He got to see a lot of generations. Pass. Wow. So he, he got the he saw Enoch Enoch grow to be two hundred and forty three years old before he died. Mm -hmm. Enoch was eighth from Adam? I think he was seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. He got to see seven generations, man. Mm -hmm. You know a lot that's a But he was never supposed to die. He was intended not to die at all until he ate the fruit. Mm -hmm. To my Adam. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't to die at all. Adam, he only knew good. He didn't know evil. Okay. Oh, yeah, 18? 18. 18. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secrete himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men three days and then went to them for one day. Okay, so this was his uh, strategy. He did not entirely secrete himself from them, but he kept away from the sons of men three days and went to them for one day. So he'd be out, be gone three days, come out for a day, be gone three more days, mm 
-hmm. Come out for a day. First yeah. night. Mm -hmm. First night team. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Most High's power. In the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Most High and all they asked him about the Most High, he told them. Where, you, where was you at? Uh, Verse 19. Okay. That's not. Oh. Uh, verse 20. And he did in this manner for many years, and he afterward concealed himself for six days and appeared to his people one day in seven, and after that once in the month, and then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him and desired again to see the face of Enoch and to hear his words. But they could not, as all the sons of men was greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that we that was seated upon his countenance, therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. Wow. So he got so close to the most high mm -hmm. that he had a God like awe to his face, to his countenance. Where people couldn't even look on him, man. Like, oh my goodness, this dude, you know, you look at somebody and you just can't hardly, they just, you know, they just. You got that aura on them. Yeah, and you'd be like, or you, like when somebody do something to you and they just can't look at you because they know what they've done to you. Mm -hmm. They can't look you in the face. Right. Yeah. Right. They were scared to even put their eyes upon him because they thought they was going to be punished and die. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's going to take us to 1 John chapter 2. We're going to get 15 through 17 in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Some commentary here. The more you desire the things from above, the more your spirit is strengthened. Enoch had the diligence and the love for the Father to accomplish things far beyond this world and its physical limitations as we understand them today. The question is, what do we love above the Most High that keeps us from our own spiritual growth? Hmm. I'm sure we can come up with a lot of different things. We say, oh no, there's nothing. But what your actions show, show this is what you, you, uh, you know what I mean? You love more than your quest for the most high. You should know a person by their fruits. Absolutely. You shall know them by their fruits. Uh, man, keeps that's, that was a heck of a schedule to keep, man. He's like, he went from three days out, I mean, three days in, one day out, to six days in, one day out, then once a month. Then a year. Once a year. He was like, man, I don't need all that out there. The, the wicked out there. Plus, you know what I mean? That's how the uh, the fallen angels, man, they, even the fallen angels was like, yo, man, you so close to the most high. Tell the most high, man, we sorry. For what we did, man, we, we repent. Like, how, how, man, everybody should strive to get that, uh, that, uh, you know, that close to the most high. Mm -hmm. Where you got angels running to you, telling you to intercede for them to the most high. Indeed. Wow. Indeed. That's so why I said Enoch was a perfect man, you know, because he walked up righteous with the Most High. Right, day right. Day. That's why he didn't taste death. At all. Because he was so locked in with the spiritual world that spirits was coming to him. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we're in the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. Wait, wait, wait. 
Well, we've been talking for a minute, so they should be there. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world. Be like Enoch. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, Ahiah, is not in him. You're too busy out in the streets mm -hmm. to be paying attention to your spirituality. You're too caught up in your flesh. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Come on, Aka. We're going to go into that next week, man. Mm. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And there's many different types of lust. We're going to cover that next week. But the pride of life, being prideful, which we were all taught to be from kids. I know I was. I was taught to do it the wrong way, Aka. They said, you ain't got no pride in yourself. You're just going to let that happen. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And that's exactly the way I was taught to be prideful. You know what I mean? I was taught, man, the more notches you had on your belt dealing with these women, the better, bigger of a man you was. I was taught totally wrong. Totally. Had to totally readjust. Still trying to adjust. Go ahead, Ock. Uh, verse 17? Yeah. Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of a higher abideth forever. <laughs> That's right, because you doing the highest will, you're going to have everlasting life. You're going to abide forever. But guess what? If you're caught up in your lust, no matter what type of lust it is, you're going to pass away, just like the world. So we're going to go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12 through 18, the book of Exodus. Man, this is a great lesson. I'm going to keep my hands still. <laughs> I can't. Got some commentary with this. Twenty-four. Yeah. Book of Exodus 24, verses 12 through 18. The three things that John mentions in verse 16 are the primary things all men and women fall in subjection to in this world. Con, read that uh, 16 again. I, oh, never mind, I got you. <laughs> For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, because we love, you know what I mean? Eyes be all over the place. You know what I mean? Whether it's that new whip, whether it's, you know what I mean? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Looking at, you know, these females, whatever. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. We must transcend these things as Enoch did if we hope to see the kingdom. Our often half-hearted efforts will not get us in. That's calm. That's calm right there. It's our understanding of our own ongoing shortcomings that cast doubt and hinder our faith. This is Satan's primary leverage on us in order to keep us subject to the rules of this physical realm. We must put away our old sinful life to be on a level like our great forefathers 
and for mothers. So that's going to take us into the book of Exodus. The water. And it's going to be Exodus 24, verses 12 through 18. Mm -hmm. Let's start. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. And the Most High Ahiah said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the Mount of Ahiah. Joshua was his main man. I think he killed the man for Joshua. I don't know if that was Joshua. But in, the, in the movie, it was Joshua, but we don't know. I don't know if it says that in the scriptures. Verse 14. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any manners to do it, let him come unto them. Okay. He's, uh, he's, he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, you got Aaron and her with you. If any man have any manners to do, let them come to them. Like I'm going, me and Joshua going up here to handle some business. Any matters going on down there, you give them to Aaron and her. Go ahead. Verse 15, And Moses went up into the mount, and the cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Most High abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud, 16, And the glory of, and the glory of the Most High abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it. Six days. And the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Wow. So six days, the mount was cut, was a cloud covered the mount. Six days. And on the seventh day, he's like, Moses, got something for you. Verse 17. And the sight of the glory of the Most High was like, devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Verse 18. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, it's a key number for the most high. Mm -hmm. 40 days, 40 nights. It's a lot of fasting. Man. Whew. One day I pray. I can get there. So we're going to the book of 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 3 through 6, and we're going back to Exodus after that. Coming back to Exodus, y'all. But we're in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. There was a serious meeting between the spiritual realm and the physical realm that that we were able to witness from afar. The problem is, if we hope to be close to Yeshia, like Moses, we must separate ourselves from this wicked world spiritually first. The alternative is we will be amongst the fearful, like our forefathers, who were in complete fear when Yeshia came down. And that word, I'm sorry, the alternative is we will be amongst the fearful like our forefathers who were in complete fear when Yeshia came down. We're in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 3 through six. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Mm -hmm. We walking in the flesh, but we ain't supposed to war after the flesh, which most of us do. All of us, like I say, you never, you never can say all, but 
Man, I'm about to do that off dirty, man. That did you see what he did to me, man? That's Warren in the flesh. Verse four. Mm -hmm. Verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not are not cardinal, but mighty through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. Mighty through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal. Like it don't begin in the flesh. What that's saying. Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Ahia, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yeshaya. Con. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Right. Having the readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Verse 7, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? Do ye, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Yeshayas, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Yeshaya, even so are we Yeshayas. Okay, so that's going to take us to, back to the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Exodus 34, verses 27 through 35. There is a process that every professed follower of the Most High and Yeshia must go through. Once you have left off from sin, and learn to control your thoughts by following the Father, the Father's will under the Shia. You will then be ready to truly help edify others. This process of obedience also prepares your spirit for battles in the unseen realm. Let me say that again. There is a process that every professed follower of the Most High and Yeshaya must go through. Once you have left off from sin and learned to control your thoughts by following the Father's will under Yeshaya, you will then be ready to truly help edify others. This process of obedience also prepares your spirit for battles in the unseen realm. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, starting at the 27th verse. Exodus, chapter 34, verse 27. One, one second. Ag, after this, we're going to second address. Go ahead, Ag. And the Most High Ahiah said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tender of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Mm-hmm. And he was there with the Most High Ahiah forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Verse 29. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hands. And when he came down from the mount, that Moses wished not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Verse 30. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. Mm -hmm. Just like Enoch. Enoch. Just about to say that. Just like Enoch. Just like Enoch. He was so locked in with the spiritual realm. They couldn't look upon his face. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Most High Ahiah had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. 
until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Most High to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spoke unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Right, so he, his face, his countenance was so glorious. He had to actually put a veil over his face because people could not look upon him. His face was, it was too glorious. He only took it off when he went in to speak to the Most High. Wow. Verse 35. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Mm-hmm. Crazy. That's when you know you really not that. And, and the crazy thing about it is, as close as he was, you know, the most high speaking with him face to face, you know, so to speak. He didn't get into, he wasn't allowed to go into the kingdom. And Satan tried to contend for his soul. Mm -hmm. So what, what type of chance do we got if we straddling the fence walking or ain't doing this walk right? Well, you know... I got a precept for that right there. Let me Let's bring it up. Let me get it. It's in the book of Job. Because people think this is a this is some type of game. Where are we going up? Uh, book of Job, chapter fifteen, verse fifteen. Book of Job, chapter fifteen, verse fifteen. It's the precept. Book of Job, 15 and 15. After that, we're going to 2nd Edgers, chapter 1. <coughs> what you got for us, Ock? Job, chapter 15, verse 15. Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints, yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. So we're nothing. Mm-hmm. Come on. So we're going to the book of Second Edgers, chapter 1, verses 12 through 19. When Moses returned from the mount for the second time, the people were afraid because the glory which was shining from his face. Their own sinful acts increased their fear, being they had worshipped another god just prior to Moses leaving for the mount. This is another example of the same process as Enoch through Moses by separating himself from the people and their sometimes carnal ways, he was able to deal with the incorruptible realm in order to bring truth to those that were still subject to sin. Wow. By separating himself from the people and their sometimes carnal ways, he was able to deal with the incorruptible realm in order to bring truth to those that were still subject to sin. We're in the book of Second Edgers in your Apocrypha, chapter 1, starting at the 12th verse, verses 12 through 19. Right here. Second Ezra chapter 1 verse 12 Speak thou therefore unto them saying thus said the most high Ahiah I led you through the sea in the beginning and gave you a large and safe passage I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest I gave you light in a pillar of fire and great wonders have I done among you 
and yet have you forgotten me, said the Most High Ahiah. Verse 15. Thus said the Almighty Power Ahiah, the quails, for as a token for you, I gave you tents for your safeguard. Nevertheless, you murmured there. Mm -hmm. He said the quails were as a token to you. I gave you tents for your safeguard. Never, nevertheless, you can still murmur there. Verse 17. Where are the benefits that I have done for you when you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness? Did you not cry unto me? Yeah, so he's like, listen. I gave you the light and the pillar of fire. Great wonders have I done before you, yet you have, yet have ye forgotten me. And, what's it say? I mean, they just constantly murmured every, every step of the way. They triumphed not in his name for the destruction of your enemies, but ever to this day. Do ye yet murmur? Complain 24-7. Yeah, like when you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did ye not cry unto me? Verse 18. Saying, why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. Hmm. That sounds just like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Verse 19. Then had I pity upon your mourners and gave you manna to eat. So you did eat angels' bread. He's eating angels' bread. And they start complaining about that. Like, what is this stuff, man? This ain't like that bread we used to in Egypt. We're going to stay in second address. We're going to the second chapter. Verses 35 through 41. The Father gave... Hold on. My bad. Uh, my bad. It's a misprint. It's mm -hmm. their fault. Because that's supposed to be one. Right. Well, they got two, so it's their fault. Right. Some commentary here. Father gave us far more than we ever deserved as a rebellious people. Even until this day, with thousands of signs and wonders that the kingdom will soon come, we are rebellious and murmur against him and those that speak of him so that you will, so that you will better know him. Let me start over. The Father gave us far more than we ever deserved as a rebellious people. Even until this day, with thousands of signs and wonders that the kingdom will soon come, we are rebellious and murmur against him. And those that speak of him, so that you will better know him. If we tasted the bread of heaven and murmured, how much more do we murmur in the physical absence of the bread of life? We have a lot to learn. Right. You know, we getting bread, the bread of heaven. They eating up there, and we was complaining about that. And they were the only people on the earth at the time that was eating it because when they crossed over the Jordan, the manna stopped. Right. Absolutely. It's crazy how we are as a people. Would he say, I credit gave this, this truth to any other nation. Mm -hmm. They would have listened mm -hmm. and been obedient. Uh, I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's enough. Let's, go, let's get it, man. Let's get it. We're going to the book of Romans for that verse. Okay, maybe we can find it later. It's going to take some time. We're 
going to Ezekiel after Second Ezra. Go ahead, huh? Second Ezra chapter two, verse thirty-five. Be ready to reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forever more. Verse 36. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. Verse 37. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks unto him that have called you to the heavenly kingdom. Verse 38. Arise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Most High Ayah. Rise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. 39. Mm -hmm. 39. Which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Most High Ayah. The uh, sealed are the ones who have departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments. Verse 40. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Most High Ahia. Mm -hmm. You want to keep going? Yeah, 41. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Most High Ahia that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed. Called from the beginning. And that's what people don't realize. People doing this work and the people his, uh, that are sealed have been sealed and called out from the beginning. So we're going to Ezekiel chapter 33. We're going to hit verses 30 through 33. The book of Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30 through 33. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Most High that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. The world is actually a shadow of the realm, the real world to come. Adam and a select few saw the real world and were merely, and we merely get glimpses of the heavenly. Those that flee the darkness that the wicked world contains and begin to focus on the spiritual things will be rewarded. With the Shia, with the Shia comes light and darkness will eventually be rooted out. So those that flee the darkness that this wicked world contains and begin to focus on the spiritual things will be rewarded. With Ishaya comes light and darkness and eventually will be rooted out. Ishaya brings the light and darkness will eventually be rooted out. When the book of Ezekiel chapter 33 Verses 30 through 33. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come. I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Most High. Verse 31. 
and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they but they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Right. We talk a good game. Israel can talk a good game. When it comes to actually putting this stuff into action, that's a whole nother story. Verse 32, And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Mm -hmm. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. Yeah, but you know what? When they figure that out, too late. It's going to be way too late for them. And that's that's another problem of ours. The wolf eventually realized, man, I was a straight up prophet that was talking to us, yo. Why didn't we listen? It's going to take us to the book of Revelations, chapter 12. We're going to get two verses out of Revelations 12, verses 10 through 12. Then we're going to 1 Peter. Book of Revelations, chapter 12, verses 10 through 12. If we claim we follow the truth, then the truth must live in us and guide our lives. Our people have always gone to church, but how many leave church and still live in righteousness when nobody from the church is around? Hmm. I used to be definitely, that was me, man, thinking I went to church for an hour, mm -hmm. hour and a half, thinking I was all good. Go right, as soon as I left church, right back out doing the same things I was doing before I got in there. I thought you was doing something. Yeah, I thought that hour and a half was doing, was doing something for me. When I hadn't changed not one freaking bit, nothing about me. Still adulterous. Fornicating, 20 going north. The words in the Bible and the strong words of a person the Most High chose to deliver them to you are not there for entertainment. If you believe, then you show through your life that you believe. Righteousness is a seven days a weak thing. That's true, man. Like I said, I used to think that hour and a half was doing, like I was straight. Huh? I went to church this week. Did you go? Thinking I did something. And be right back out there. Ain't changed. What nothing about it. Cause I, my thing was the most high. I mean, uh, Christ won't wash away my sins because I went to church for an hour and a half. Hmm. You know what I mean? I can just keep sinning 20 going north. And he's going to keep washing me clean. That's the deception they put you under. And I was in it. Big time. We're in the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verses 10 through 12. Revelation, chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our power are higher in the power of his anointed, Yeshua, For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. Day and night, he's accusing. I know I'm getting this one. Mm -hmm. I know this one right here. That's mine, right? You know what? We got a precept for that. Too. Let's get it. Zach Ryan. Uh, chapter 3, 1 through 3. Zechariah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. We got a precept. They don't have to go there. You know, right. Stay in place. Y'all can stay in place. When we got that precept, you want to write it down. This is showing how Satan was accusing our brethren. Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Most High, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. The, and the Most High said unto Satan, The Most High rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Most High that have chosen Jerusalem, rebuked thee. Is not this a brand 
pluck it out of the fire or plucked out of the fire. Now Joshua, now Joshua was clothed with the filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Right. That's all he do. Man, I know I got this one right here. I know he coming with me. Right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with Moses. Right? High, yeah, he did the same thing to Moses. So, I mean, he, that's his thing. Day and night, nonstop. Mm -hmm. This one's mine, ain't it? Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 again. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our power, Ahia, and the power of his anointed, Yeshia. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power, Ahia, day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Huh. The heavens is rejoicing, and them that dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Because, man, the devil's been thrown down to us. Having great wrath, because he know he has but a short time. It's even shorter now. I, mm -hmm. Most definitely. He really sweating bullets now. Because he is really at the end of his, whatever you want to call it, a reign. He's coming, he's at the end. That's going to take us to First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Going to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. The devil looks to eliminate the seed of the righteous from the world because he is looking to escape judgment. We must learn not to enjoy the evil things of all this present life because that is how the adversary looks to bring about our downfall. All these different media outlets that we are that we live our lives through, hmm, social media, all these different media outlets that we live our lives through in part were Satan's way to aggressively destroying the righteous in a shorter period of time through sin and even through distraction from what really is important to focus on. Mm -hmm. They show caught up on social media and focused on that. They can't focus on what they're supposed to be focused on. Attention seekers. Yeah. Look at me, y'all. The, the age of the selfie. And sin into your home without ha ever having to leave to find it. That's true, Con. That's Con right there. Mm -hmm. You can bring sin into your home without ever having to leave to find it. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Especially your phone yeah. is all you need to have it to give you enough sin to damn you. Mm -hmm. Just your phone, your cell phone is enough to take you straight to hell. One way ticket. Satan, he's the prince of the air. And that's so true. Now you can stay in the house like you want to, like Enoch. You want to throw your phone out too. If you got your phone, that's all you need. The television. That's all you need for a one way ticket to hell. We're in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Man, that is so true. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye youngest, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. 
For the most high resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. You got to read that one again. Uh, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for the most high a higher resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. That means show respect to the age. People right. have been here longer Respect than you. your elders. That's afraid. That's something that went out back in the day. It used to be practiced and preached, but that's something that no longer exists. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the almighty hand of Baha'i, that he may exalt you in due time. Right, right. If you stay, keep yourself in subjection and stay humble, he may exalt you in due time. A lot of us, we ain't we too impatient, though, mm -hmm. for all that and jealous. Like, why this dude, you know, who this dude think he is, man, reading these lessons? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why is he the one? Verse 7, casting all your cares, go casting all your care upon him, for he care for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And he's slick with it, man. Man, is there anybody slicker? Because he know, man, he, he knows that all our weaknesses. He knows exactly how to come at each and every one of us. The scripture says he he had more wisdom than Daniel, or he's wiser than that than Daniel. I think it's in it's either in Ezekiel or it's in I say I think it's in Ezekiel though. Yeah, cause he he know exactly how to get you to trip up and fall. Mm -hmm. Verse nine, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Right, meaning you're not going through this thing alone. You know what I mean? Like, your brothers and sisters is, is getting they knocks on the head also. But how you reacting to it? How you, you know what I mean? You staying steadfast in the faith? Or are you not? Don't think you, you're the only one going through something. <coughs> it's a test. Right. It's a big test. Verse 10. But the Most High, a higher of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Yeshua the anointed, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Ooh, read that again. Verse 10. But the power, a higher of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Yeshua the anointed, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Yeah, so it's like the old saying, whatever don't kill you is supposed to make you stronger through your suffering for a while to make you perfect, mm -hmm. to establish you, to strengthen you, to settle you. That's what it's, about. That's what it's for. Not to get you to turn away and be like, oh, I can't, I'm tired of this. I ain't doing this no more. It's to strengthen you for what's to come, to make you perfect, to establish you, to settle you. So we're going to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 6 through 11. Then we're going back to Exodus. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 6 through 7. How many of us are be ready to throw in the towel after one, you know, you went through a little something, something. Uh, I can't do this no more. Uh, I'm just going to go crawl under my rock. Go back to the world. Yeah, or I'm going back to the world, man. I just had fun. I didn't, wasn't worried about nothing. You know what I mean? Didn't have a care in the world when I was in the world. Some of us just be ready to crawl under that rock. Come lift that rock, Ock, when it's all over. You know what I mean? I can't do it, Ock. You must 
humble yourself under the Most High's mighty hand, which is Yeshaya. Time to live a life of sobriety in every way, understanding the devil awaits his opportunity to take you down. Just sitting there chilling and waiting. Mm -hmm. Also, keep in mind that there is always someone in the body with a similar story or worse than yours. So you are not alone in your struggles. I just said that. Mm -hmm. You know, that should give you a little strength knowing that you ain't going through this alone, man. Like, you know what I mean? You think, oh, man, every time it's always me, man. You know what I mean? I'm always going through. Ain't nobody else going through nothing. Keep my hands still hot. <laughs> okay, so that's going to bring us to the book of Deuteronomy. It's the seventh chapter, verses 6 through 11. Ak. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Most High by power, Ahia. Yes, thou art a holy people set apart. Uh -huh. The Most High by power, Ahia, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people there are upon the face of the earth. Above who? Above all people there are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7. The Most High did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Mm. We was the Rudy Poots of all people. Not because we had it going on. Verse 8. But because the Most High Ahia loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Know therefore that the Most High thy power, he is a power, or he is the higher, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. A thousand generations. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And repayeth them that hate him to their face. To destroy them, he will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Wow, so you, there is a judgment, Ark. Uh -huh. And he's saying, I'm coming right to your face with it. He's going to be going to repay them that hate him to their face. Uh -huh. To destroy them. He will not be slack. Ain't giving no slack. Not at all. Not we at read all. though uh, the mother's crying for mercy in hell. Mm -hmm. Yeshari had to come down, throw him a little, a little. Uh, oh, you talking about in the uh, apocalypse of Paul? Yeah. 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 Yeshari came down, gave him a little, uh, a little piece, a little something, something. But the mother's high is like, listen, I will not be slack to him that hate me. He will repay him to his face. Verse 11. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Mm -hmm. One more time. Sure. Verse 11. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Right. And that means today. <laughs> <laughs> and every day. Yeah. So we're going back to the book of Exodus, chapter 19. And then to Isaiah. Exodus 19, verses 5 and 6. Book of Exodus, 
chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Some commentary. To be holy is to be separate from the rest of the world. If you are still looking to engross yourself in the things of the world, you are still missing the message. We were chosen for a task separate from the world so that the world may heal. The priest and his family lived a separate religious life, different from the common man. We are not to be a nation of priests, so nobody is, is oh sorry. We are now to be a nation of priests, so nobody is exempt. Read that again. We are now to be a nation of priests, so nobody is exempt. Even the Gentiles who choose this path must step away from their ways of their fathers. Even the Gentiles who choose this path must step away from the ways of their fathers. In the book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. Now therefore if you now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye should be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye should be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Excuse me, it's lock in. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Satan has his priests that follow his wickedness, and the Most High is expecting us to choose to be his. If the Satanists can come together to accomplish so many things for their agenda, how much more should we come together in righteousness? Say that again. Satan has his priests that follow his wickedness and the Most High is expecting us to choose to be his. If the Satanists can come together to accomplish so many things for their agenda, how much more should we come together in righteousness? So like they are more of a, on one accord than we are up. Mm -hmm. Because they're getting a lot of wickedness done, man. And, and you know what I mean? Like, they, they work in the tandem in unison better than we do. In righteousness. They work in wickedness in more unison than we do in righteousness. And that shouldn't be. So we're in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Most High Ahiah have spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doeth not know, my people doeth not consider. Yeah, we so scattered, lost, confused, and abused that Israel doth not know his owner, his master's crib. We don't know what's going on. 
We don't even consider. We don't even give a crap. Mm -hmm. Try to tell somebody, you know, about their history. They don't care. Nah. Are they, they so caught up in the social media and the things going on now and in their own personal wickedness. They could care less who they are and where they came from. Verse 4, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. Laden with iniquity, like he's just swimming in it. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Most High. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Man, we so backwards. I just hate to, I just, I got to bring it up. It stopped again. No, it's just still going, bro. Uh, okay. But, um, bring up that trial, man. Amber Geiger. Oh, you been following that? Um, I caught pieces and puzzles on man. Facebook. Sister Kaala was sitting there, you know, talking to me about it earlier. I really don't know the details, though. That Stockholm Syndrome runs deep in Israel. He's so in love with our captors, man. Hate to see him suffer uh, righteousness. The things that should be for them. Just can't stand and watch it happen, man. That's all I'm going to say about it. But go ahead. Verse 5. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Yeah, we revolt and have more strife among us than we do against our captors. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. No soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying, and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Yeah, we just a mess. It shows every day through the media. You know, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. This is actually going to close it out for us this week. Huh? Yeah. It's the last clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just in time. Hopefully it's going to cut off. Man, this is sickening. I'm going to just let that go. But uh, we choose to do evil even though evil has only destroyed us and stricken us with diseases. Even an ox recognizes when his master is giving him commands and follows it. We have greatness contained within which has greater promises than the law of sin within us. It's time we hear the Father's voice and walk in the destiny of the righteous because time is almost up. It's the last script of this lesson. The book of Romans chapter 13 verses 11 through 14. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is hard time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chamberlain and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Messiah, Yeshua the Anointed, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. We are to make no provisions for the flesh. Not a couple, 
Not a few, not any provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Shalom, and let's finish strong, brothers and sisters. Praise the high. Mm -hmm. Indeed. It's a good lesson. That's going to really be a good prelude to the next lesson. Um, on lust? Yeah, lust. And uh, so. <clears throat> Hello, everyone out there. We got any comments, questions? No, I'm still rolling. We just got to pray out. Thank you, brothers, for a great lesson. Young as well. Very edifying and it helped me. My thanks. I appreciate it. Very good lesson. No problem. Before we really get started on uh, comments and questions, we're going to pray out first. And then... Uh, Anybody has any anything to say? We welcome it. The Lord's Prayer in uh, uh, Hebrew and English, and uh, I like to end with numbers. Was that number six? Hayabashim Yeshaiwa Kodash Wak Abanawa Shibashim Mayam Kwadash Hayashim Ka Ahayamalak Wafka Thaba Ah Rataza Wanka Haya Asha Ba A Rataza Kawa Haya Bashim Mayam the Don and Nawa Lukon Kao Yawan Wasalok Nawa Kaba Waf Nawa Kosalok Nawa Kaba Waf Yanawa Wala A Thaba Ya A Nawa Banas and Yawan A Ba Hawa Sha Nawa Ma Un Rai Taya Laka Hamalakwa wa ha Allah wa ha ta pa araf la awalamiyum shalawam barakatha the water aman. Our Father which is in heaven, holy be your name. I am your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it be in heaven. Give to us bread all day and forgive and excuse our debts as we forgive our debtors. And not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For to you the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So be it. I'm going to uh, book of Numbers. Sixth chapter. Can't remember the verse. 22 through 27. Okay. We're in the Hebrew. We in the Hebrew first. Ahaya Bahashim Yeshai Waha Kodasha Wak. Ya Baraka Ahaya Waya Shamaka Ya A Ahaya Panyanwa Aoyaka Wamaka Anka Yesha A Ahaya Panyanwa Aoyaka Wa Yasham Laka Salam Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya Barakwapa Yasharala Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya Barakwapa Yasharala Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya Barakwapa Yashara Yasharala Shalakia. Come on. He bless you, the Most High, and he watches, keepeth you. Shine the Most High's face, his, unto you, and his gracious to you. He lift up the Most High's face unto you. The Most High, in the name, Savior Christ, bless and heal. Barakapa, Yasharela, bless and heal Israel. Amen. Okay, what we got out there? How's everybody?